Uh, this brief session on Facebook Live uh, will be on eye injuries that we commonly see in our day-to-day -day life. So, I am Dr. Shailaja N, working as a consultant ophthalmologist in Shaker Eye Hospital. So, let me uh, start the uh, sharing the screen now. Um, so, uh, this, this uh, uh, is about eye injuries, um, you know, commonly uh, seen eye injuries in our day-to-day -day life. Um, yeah. So, before uh, going to the topic per se, I would like to describe the, um, you know, structure of the eye, um, uh, structure of the human eye first. So this is the this is how we uh, see our uh, eye. This is the front view. Let me uh, have a pointer. Okay, this is the front view. This is the side view, and uh, here is the uh, a model of a eye, a cross section of an eye uh, from front to back, which goes like that. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, black portion or the central portion of uh, uh, the eye, which is seen. Uh, 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 from the front view, uh, it's called the cornea. It is a transparent structure, as you can see over here. And um, you know, from front to back, if you go the front, if you divide the eyeball um, into five parts, the only one fifth is formed by the cornea, which is a transparent structure. I've also put a picture of uh, a watch over here, where you see a watch glass which sits on the dial of the watch. So cornea also sits like a dial of a watch glass. Okay, so it's a transparent structure. And the entire white portion of the eye, which is which forms the four-fifth of the entire eyeball, is the sclera. So then we have the contents of the eye. Okay, so behind the cornea, there is the iris, that is the brown color, uh, which we see usually in Indian eyes, we have various shades of brown. Sometimes you see different colors of the eye, which is given by the iris. Okay, behind the iris, we have the lens, uh, natural lens, so that is the crystalline lens in the eye. Okay, and uh, behind the lens, we have um, the eye cavity, the entire cavity of the eye, which is filled by a transparent jelly-like substance, which we technically call as uh, vitreous. Okay, so and uh, the layers of the eye, the outermost is formed by the cornea here, which is transparent, and the sclera, which is white portion. The middle layer, just adjacent to the outermost layer, will be the vascular layer, that is, the which supplies blood. The blood supply to the eye is by the vascular layer. And the innermost layer, the orangish shade, which you can see over here, is the nerve tissue of the eye, that is called retina. So all the nerves from the retina will go um, make one optic nerve and that over here it exits uh, from uh, the back portion of the eyeball. Okay, so these are the parts of the eye, the layers of the eye, the contents of the eye from front to back. Okay, so going on to the next, this, uh, this is the structure of our human eye. Okay, and then we have the parts that protect the eye like we have the bony orbit. See, in the human body, any structure which is delicate will be protected by bone. For example, if you can uh, think of brain, it is protected by the skull bone. If you think of lungs and heart, it is protected by the rib cage. Similarly, the eye, it's a very delicate uh, you know, structure which has to be protected by bone. So this orbit is the bone within the skull. Mm, okay, and uh, um, that in common terms, if you have to know, it is the socket of the eye. Okay, so the eyeball sits inside the socket of the eye and it is covered externally by, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so it is covered externally by the eye lids and the eye lashes and between the eyeball and the eye uh, socket, uh, we have the fat and the muscle tissues which act as a cushioning, uh, which gives a cushioning effect to the eye. So this is about, uh, you know, the parts which protect the eye, eyeball as such, structure of the eye and the parts that protect the eye. So going on. Um, now, coming to the injuries of the eye, just for the sake of understanding, I have divided into injuries within the eye and injuries around the eye. Okay, so injuries in the eye can be in any form. I will start showing, showing the pictures so you will be able to understand much uh, in a better way. 
so uh, we see most commonly we see the foreign bodies inside the eye okay so it can be superficial like this is the part uh, uh, just behind the lid when we ever at the lid we see the foreign body here you can see a, a small dust particle or a foreign body and uh, in the second picture you see a foreign body over the cornea that is the black portion of the eye which is a transparent portion of the eye uh, in many instances these uh, you know foreign bodies can happen anywhere um, like uh, when you are traveling in a, on a bike uh, you know with uh, open eyes and uh, the, any foreign body can hit your uh, eye it can be a dust particle it can be a you know a plant or a seed of a plant or a small seed or it can be a worm or an insect okay hitting the eye so this is the most common you know injury which we see uh, which has to be removed and uh, done sometimes you know this is a caterpillar picture which i have shown and in actually in village uh, people population over there sometimes come with you know foreign bodies or caterpillar hair which gets stuck inside the eye and giving rise to lot of irritation so this has to be uh, removed okay and um, so this foreign body especially if it is a high velocity foreign body coming out of uh, you know some workers uh, most of the times we see uh, manual workers you know using um, uh, uh, stone uh, who do stone cutting or you know drilling will have a high velocity foreign body entering uh, uh, into the eye so it can sit anywhere if you see the model the foreign body can enter can be superficial over the cornea or the conjunctiva or it can you know enter uh, deeper inside the uh, the space between the cornea and the lens or it can enter the lens okay this the picture over here uh, shows a, a foreign body which is sitting in the space between the cornea and the iris uh, so there is a clear fluid filled uh, space here which uh, where the foreign body is lodged over there just cross the cornea gone through the eye and gone uh, sit, sitting inside in the chamber and in this picture we see a foreign body sitting on the lens so sometimes what happens it can cross the lens sit in the vitreous cavity or it can cross uh, cross the vitreous cavity as well sit in the ports of the eye so it depends on the speed of the foreign body like if it is a high velocity um, uh, object a metal or a wooden piece or a stone piece can go directly into the eye so this is uh, we uh, describe this as a intraocular foreign body so this is a classic picture of an intraocular foreign body where it has gone through and through into the eye okay uh, there is an entry wound here the lens has become cataractous the naturally the lens will be clear or transparent so when it becomes uh, cataractous it will be white like this then it has passed through the lens through the entire cavity this is a scan picture showing the uh, you know highly reflective uh, foreign body over here okay and uh, this is the picture of a retina of the retina which um, shows a metallic foreign body sitting on the retina and causing a little damage adjacent to the uh, uh, the foreign body okay and uh, here is a picture of a ct scan which shows a highly reflective uh, material over here showing uh, the um, foreign body which is sitting inside the eye so this is again an intraocular foreign body um okay and um, this uh, these pictures show a superficial injury it can be a conjunctival tear so conjunctiva is a, an again a transparent uh, layer which is uh, covering which covers the inside of the lids and outside of the white portion that is the sclera of the eye okay there can be a conjunctival tear as you can see in this picture there can there can be a conjunctival tear and under the conjunctiva there can be bleed in the second picture also i have shown a injury where which has caused um, bleed under the um, conjunctiva so we call this subconjunctival hemorrhage or bleeding okay so it can be this as simple as this or it can go deeper okay in the third picture i have shown bleeding in the anterior portion in the space uh, between uh, the cornea and the iris okay so in this picture it is covering about 1/4 of the uh, cavity whereas it can cover about half it can be the full uh, it can cover the entire eyeball so bleeding can happen following injury the bleeding can happen so these are some of the injuries which we come across um, although not very common uh, but uh, it can occur to anybody it can be following a road traffic accident it can be following an assault 
okay or uh, most common in younger individuals and especially men who do this manual work and you know have the chances of getting hit uh, to the eye so then uh, come uh, okay this uh, slide has uh, shown the sharp injury sharp injury or we call it penetrating injuries penetrating injuries can be with any sharp object a, a stick of a plant or a tree or you know accidentally coming at hitting and uh, this can again be uh, for various you know uh, uh, degrees of severity it can be a mild conjunctival tear like i showed in the previous picture or it can you know cause tear on uh, tears in the cornea so this is a picture where i have shown a corneal tear which has been repaired okay there is a suture which is um, a stitch or you know stitch or sutured uh, corneal tear this is the picture showing sutured corneal tear and there can be a tear at the junction of cornea and the sclera which we call it as limbus and there can be the inner structures within the eye coming out and getting stuck in the wound okay so this, this these are some complicated wounds which can occur with a sharp injury it can be you know it is sometimes common in children uh, who play in the school and without without they their knowledge they you know try to pass a pencil which is sharp or anything in the compass uh, the compass or divider which will be there in their uh, you know um, daily uh, they use in their geometry box and all so this can happen accidentally it can be as simple as a simple tear which can be you know sutured or it can go deeper much deeper causing a severe uh, injury into to the lens it can go deeper so and uh, this is another picture where i have shown there is a dislocation of the lens okay so the, because of the impact of the injury there is the lens the entire lens is dislocated here this picture where i have shown and if it goes much deeper then even there can be retinal tears and detachment of the retina so this is a, a, a schematic representation of the detached retina and here is a big traumatic uh, retinal tear following uh, you know it could be a uh, a blunt injury with uh, in an assault or uh, with a hand and okay with a with a fist of the hand so many times with a stick or a cane so such or a cricket ball injury uh, with a high speed velocity injury so these uh, injuries can happen so from front portion of the eye to back portion of the eye the entire range of injuries can happen within the eye when there when there is an injury either sharp injury or blunt injury so coming to this injuries around the eye most of the times the eye will be intact and we see injuries around the eye it can be a lid tear or a laceration okay this is called laceration and which has been sutured it, it has to be sutured again and uh, there can be you know following blunt injuries you must have seen many times they we call it black eye either it is uh, compared to a panda eye or this is a picture of a raccoon where you see the black portion the similar picture we see with blunt injuries this has to be investigated this requires an x-ray and a ct scan because this usually occurs in this uh, basal skull, skull bone fractures so in such you know injuries around the eye also has to be evaluated so this is a entire range of uh, injuries which occur although you know uh, about uh, in a in about uh, about if we see about 10 patients in a, in a day uh, the injuries as such the incidence is less but if it happens then uh, it has to be evaluated so uh, again this is a blunt injury uh, you know can happen with a fist and all uh, there will be a fracture of the uh, bone okay this may look in especially in young children it may look the eye may look white and white without any condition without any redness without any pain but only you will come get to know when you ask the uh, child to look up or down and you see the restricted movement okay in this picture what you see there is a restricted movement of the, uh, the of this particular eye where she is not able to look up so here what has happened there is a uh, fracture in the uh, eye socket the uh, floor of the socket and there is in, um, you know uh, trapping of the muscles and fat tissue over here because of which she is not able to move the eye so these are various types of injuries which can happen around the eye so within the eye and around the eye uh, the various you know uh, 
degrees of injuries and the other important thing is uh, the chemical injuries which we come across in the daily life it can be any chemicals in the, which we usually use uh, okay these toilet cleaners or uh, uh, the pesticides and sometimes even the deodorants which will have a spray kind of thing so it can just get sprayed inside the eye and they will uh, it will have cause the chemical injury and the other thing which i have not put in this slide is a uh, you know chemical plus thermal injury sometimes the cracker injuries which will happen so it will have a chemical component of it and because of the heat produced it will also cause burns within the eye so um, so it is a combined uh, mechanism and it because of the impact it can also cause you know trauma penetrating or blunt injury so it's a combined mechanism especially the cracker injuries which we see uh, in the deepavadi type and all so chemical injuries again can be of various degrees it can be mild uh, okay where mild it can vary from mild moderate to severe so this is a picture showing mild chemical injury where you see the details but there is some congestion there is some you know damage the only the superficial layer of the eyes whereas here uh, you cannot see the details much it is very hazy and in the third picture the details are even more hazy the cornea almost it has to be naturally transparent but it has become very hazy so this is a severe form of uh, chemical injury which has happened so only in case of chemical injuries which where you definitely know that uh, some some uh, either liquid or a solid or a powder or some chemical which has entered inside the eye you can do some first aid at home that is basically you know you have to wash your eye with running water or oh, drinking water or a clean running water uh, is uh, preferable drinking water is better okay you can put yourself under the tap or under the shower and wash off uh, all the chemicals which will be there inside the eye and then meet an eye doctor so what uh, how do we protect our uh, eyes from injuries is the question so always prevention is better we have to protect our eyes especially in case of you know foreign bodies Uh, whenever you are riding you have to wear a um, protective glass or you have to wear a, a helmet with visor okay protect your eyes from all the foreign bodies dust or any plant matter or uh, you know the worm or uh, a fly which entering inside your eye with high speed and causing problems so that is one protection you can make and um, you know protecting from sharp and uh, these manual workers i have to stress on they should wear always the protective eye care okay the protective glasses will be given to them we have seen instances where uh, one particular day always they'll be wearing the glasses but one particular day they decide not to wear and that day they unluckily you know they come come to us with a foreign body with a high speed foreign body inside the eye and the damage would have been done so there is no there should be no relaxation in using the protective wear so uh, especially in uh, you know carpenters and uh, these uh, uh, manual workers who do drilling or welding those people will have high risk of uh, these high velocity foreign bodies entering inside the eye and causing a lot of damage inside the eye so prevention is always better and the other important thing which i should be i wanted to stress on stress on was uh, you know especially in children especially in schools or in playgrounds wherever they are Mm, the passing on of uh, sharp objects like uh, the um, knife or uh, scissors or you know uh, sharpened pencil pen tip of the pen it has, has to be you know well, we can make a habit out of them that let them develop a habit that they should not be handed over by and they can keep it on the table and the other person can take it so that should be you know practiced by everyone this is the best i mean at least the preventive measure which we can take and uh, be careful about you know getting injury injured um, uh, to the eye as such okay and uh, these are some preventive measures and also keep away all the you know chemical uh, substances uh, away from the children uh, the mo the most common injury caused by you know chemical injury a severe chemical injury caused we see in children especially from delayed side and all will be from uh, lime that is the lime which is used along with betel nuts and betel leaves in kannada we call it sunna and in hindi chuna and also that injury is uh, very severe it's an alkaline uh, inj uh, chemical injury and it is it can penetrate in within minutes and damage the entire eye so keep away all these uh, you know chemicals or uh, normally the deodorants 
or any children especially can then they can just spray into the eye and get cause damage so keep away from children so this is one habit which we can develop so and uh, what else yeah but sometimes you know so, uh, accidents happen and we usually will not have control on it so when especially in case of i if an injury occurs it has to be considered you have to consider it as a serious one and get a complete evaluation at a high hospital with a qualified ophthalmologist because uh, you know i have seen uh, instances where some people just go to a pharmacy and buy some drop and uh, you know use it for 2 to 3 days and then come back after about uh, once that critical period so timing is very important uh, immediately after the injury even if it is mild even if you see just a scratch or a blood a blood spot it has to be we have to rule out the deeper injury inside the eye so an eye examination has to is a, a must following a uh eye injury uh, whether it is inside the eye or around the eye whether there is a swelling of the eye or you know black eye anything we have to investigate further do some investigations do a, an x ray or a ct scan and rule out the deeper injuries uh, especially in case of foreign bodies if the exact position of the foreign body has to be seen so if it is superficial it is fine sometimes uh, people will get away with a superficial injury and uh, nothing deep or nothing no other uh, uh, injury would have occurred but if it is missed if the evaluation is missed uh, the vision is at stake so they will lose the vision uh, if for if the no timely intervention is done so it is very unfortunate that you know uh, eye is a very precisely uh, the precision of human eye Uh, very uh, intricate and delicately designed uh, structure in our body actually and uh, if with injury losing eyesight uh, following injury which can be easily prevented or which could be easily treated is a very unfortunate thing to happen so i would stress on basically my take home message will be you know you should not take it uh, lightly and uh, get a complete evaluation following any injury be it mild or be it severe so um yeah and yeah i would like to end this session with this much you know information i feel uh, um, the awareness should come where uh, you should not end up you know losing vision for uh, a reason which can be easily prevented or which can be easily uh, treated so yeah thank you thank you so much thank you very much for the uh, patient listening